I first want to thank everybody for uh, joining us today on this conversation around how to position yourself for capital and how we can help. Um, I have a few, few of my friends here joining us um, for today's conversation. I would like to just introduce them quickly. Uh, we have Rocio Molina. Rocio, would you like to? Uh, yeah. Hi, everyone. Um, I am a business consultant along with Tony um, based out of the San Jose Business Center. I'm really happy to be joining you all today to just talk through some of the concerns and things going on and how you know, we can help you remotely as best that we can um, during these times. And I hope you find the conversation useful. Thank you, Rocio. And we also have Michaela Trotter. Yes, Michaela Max. Sorry. Michaela Max. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> nice to meet everyone. Um, thank you for having me. Uh, I've been working with Rocio for uh, about a year now, I think. Um, and she's been really awesome in giving me sound advice um, with the whole business process of opening a preschool program. Thank you, Michaela. Um, we also will have Chris, Christian Dean Jesse joining us in a little bit. Um, she is a banking manager for Pro America Bank. She's on here. Oh, she's on? Yeah. Yeah, she's Hi, Tony. I'm here. Hey, Christian. Um, Hi. Thanks for jumping on. Uh, would you like to do a quick intro of yourself? Sure. So I'm the banking center manager for one of our uh, San Francisco locations at Comerica Bank. We've been around for about 170 years, helping businesses make money and save money and save time. So I work with a portfolio of clients and I help their business grow. Awesome, thank you, Christian. And I want, I want to take this time to uh, thank Comerica because um, since I joined Asian Inc. and MBDA, I would say back in 2012, um, Comerica has always been a great supporter of what we do and with our mission um, to impact our underserved communities positively. So again, I want to thank Comerica for making this happen. Um, also, thank you, Asian Inc., uh, Lamar Haystack for making this happen. So before we start, I'd like to do a uh, little housekeeping. Um, since we have a pretty short program, we, we won't be able to address all the challenges and all the questions that our attendees may have. So if you have any questions, concerns, challenges um, that you have around with capital access, please enter your questions into the chat below and we will try to address this as much as we can. Uh, this is our second session um, with this Business Sense Bootcamp. A uh, little recap on what we did last week. Uh, we, we talked a little bit about the COVID pain points. Uh, with a pressing issue right now in our country. Uh, we, we listen to what our businesses are having trouble with. Some of our, our, some of our take backs from that is, you know, there's a lot of uncertainties uh, around ever changing guidelines locally, state and federally. So, and also there's different industries who have different guidelines. So there's, that, that causes more confusion for some of our business owners. Some business owners are not allowed to reopen yet, so there's a fear of falling so far behind that it, it will be perhaps like impossible for them to be sustainable again. We also talked. To, we also jumped in a little bit about how to manage um, accounts payable and accounts receivable. Uh, managing cash flow is one really important thing uh, for the the future of a business and uh, how they would obtain capital. So Christian, uh, I'm gonna start with you. Uh, I'm gonna start the conversation with you with, a, uh, with some of your thoughts, knowing the pressing issue that we're, our country is facing right now um, and the, the, the possible impact that uh, COVID will have on our lending world. Can you talk a little bit about what changes we might see with the underwriting process, if there's any, and how we can help businesses prepare for these changes? Absolutely, thanks, Tony. Yeah, so things have definitely changed in terms of uh, the lending front. I'll say that uh, across the board in the industry, uh, there's been so much news about uh, different financial institutions changing the way that they're doing lending in terms of personal. We've seen it on the mortgage. We're also seeing it on the business side as well. So uh, a couple of things to keep in mind when 
uh, we are thinking of doing lending is to make sure uh, that we do still see consistent revenue uh, for the business. We want to make sure that the business is positioned pretty well. And so with that, we do uh, ask for at least two years of business and personal tax returns. And in those business and personal tax returns, what are we looking for? Well, we're looking for consistent flow of revenue. Now, I know given the current environment, a lot of businesses have seen um, a, a detriment to their revenue when it comes to income. So we uh, do have uh, op opportunities for, for businesses as well who have been uh, impacted by COVID, um, more so on the SBA side. Uh, but we, in, in terms of how to prepare, so we do ask for a minimum of two years of business and tax returns. We ask for your personal financial statement. And this is specifically for the business owner. As the business owner, we do ask for your personal financial statement. Uh, we would ask for business, business loan application, uh, sign 4506T, so request for transcript for tax returns. And we would ask for, you know, consent to use uh, the taxpayer information, including a year-to-date profit and loss. Now, with the year-to-date profit and loss, we are now into July. So say, for example, the business was doing really well in January, February, and saw a detriment in uh, the middle months and now is picking back up. We would ask for, you know, we do a COVID questionnaire, so we would want to know if the business has been impacted, which would allow us to um, guide the business in terms of how to go about lending if they were impacted by COVID. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you for that, Christian. That's really, that's really useful information that we have there. Um, it's, always, it's always good to know what learners are looking for mm -hmm. during um, or pre or post uh, COVID, because I'm not sure if any, everybody remembers um, back in 2008, 2009, after the subprime bust, the lending process became really strenuous um, for, for applicants uh, because the amount of money the, the lenders uh, took in loss, they made it, made it really, really, really hard for, for anybody to get capital. So with, with that, I, I want to go through what lenders are usually looking for um, when, they're, when they're doing the under, underwriting, uh, when they're underwriting loan inquiries. Um, and mainly, it's, it's, it's really around the five C's of credit. There's character, capacity, there's capital, there's condition, and there's collateral. Um, character is, is basically what we're looking at is, you know, does our applicant have the background education um, in the industry that they're working on. Um, normally, normally a, a applicant can show the character, you know, parts of the business plan, right? So how, how in depth they're going on with the business plans, uh, how much detail they put in with the business plan shows the knowledge they have around their own industry. Um, but, I, but I think the main, the main thing around character is, uh, if, the, if there's any delinquencies in your credit report. So that really shows because any, any licensing, any, work, uh, any credit history that are bad in the, in the, in the past, it would, it would help them predict the future. So it's really important for them to have a, soft, uh, a sound credit history. Um, and we will, go, we will go more in depth into that next week. So, so make sure you tune in to our, uh, to our session next week when, it, when we talk about more, when we talk more about the, the business and personal um, credit history and how to build that. Our, our next C is the capacity, aka cash flow. The, lend, the lenders will want to see how, how, how the business is able to repay the loan. The business should have um, sufficient cash flow to support the business expenses um, and examining the payment history of the current loans and expenses uh, is an indicator of the borrower's reliability to make loan payments. So. Uh, they will take they will take uh, in consideration your debt to income ratio, with your personal and your business finances. And I would like I always like to say be be as transparent as possible. Any any cash flow coming in and out of your business, show it, um, or else we won't be able to report it uh, when we inquire with the banks. 
And Christian, I'm, I'm going to come back to you again. Um, I, I know you, you have a, some great ideas to forecast um, cash flow. And mm -hmm. would you like to would you like to speak upon that? Sure. Uh, yeah. So as you've said, cash flow and reporting all information is important, especially when you uh, are a business owner and you're first starting out. So making sure you are reporting all of your uh, cash flow. So a cash flow, uh, and I recommend forecasting, can help you as far as predicting or dealing with, in, dealing with any sort of upcoming uh, cash shortages or an influx in cash. And so cash, uh, for, cash flow forecasting really works with uh, meeting tax obligations. It meets with um, any, you know, uh, new equipment purchases, whether the business has uh, assets or uh, equipment they want to purchase. Um, you can identify if and when you need small business loans or lines of credit. I will say that any beginning business owner um, for to be attractive for lending, you do need tax returns that are prepared accurately. So if you are just starting out and you are a business owner, um, and you're interested in lending, uh, you would need uh, tax returns in order to be considered uh, for lending needs. So um, you want to you you want to definitely create a cash flow. You could actually go to back to that slide. Thank oh, you. Sorry. <laughs> so you want to create a cash flow, and you know Comerica does give you this link, and uh, well, you can copy this here as far as estimating your sales, forecasting the timing of your cash, estimating the fixed and variable cost. Uh, really, it just gives you a full synopsis of what's coming in and what's going out. So this is something that you want to manage very strategically. I will say that as a business owner, a baker bakes and somebody who does construction does construction but oftentimes the finances of the business is forgotten. So we wanna make sure that we are paying attention to the forecasting and the cash flow of what's coming in versus what's going out so that it's balancing and it's not a negative. So as far as budgeting tools, uh, you want to make sure you're tracking your expenses, you're tracking your sales goals, and you're building a cash buffer. So you need essentially a savings, right? So we want to make sure that we have that, that cash for emergencies. Uh, we want to make sure that we, you're, you're staying, market, you're staying um, uh, competitive in your market so that you're staying above your competitors. So oftentimes what happens is when business owners, especially beginning business owners, they get so excited, they've got the business, they've got people who are interested in, in their services and they're taking on you know, different people to work with them. Uh, off, and, and they are like, oh, this is so much cash coming in. But at the end of the month, they're finding that their sales and uh, their what's going out, their overhead is so close. And so budgeting tools can help with making sure that you are not only making money, but that you're saving money for a rainy day. You can go to the next slide. Awesome. Um, so the, ne the next thing we have is the capital. So with this, a lot of people, when people hear the word capital, they think, oh, money, 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 um, for the operating the business. But a lot of lenders look at how, how much skin you would you have in the game. So they will like to see how much cash you invested in your own business, because the more capital injection you Put in. I'm sorry to interrupt you. I can't hear anything that you're saying. I'm not sure if it's. I'm online. sorry. Can you can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you now. Thank I you. apologize. No so so basically, with capital, a lot of a lot of businesses would think um, how much how much money the business have or the business you know uses turn around. But when when most lenders when most lenders look at capital, they look at how much money personally did the business owner inject into the business because the more money they inject in the business, the less likely the chances of the loan defaulting. Mm -hmm. and, and then if a, it also shows that the business owner is willing to take personal risk, meaning they, meaning they're, they're more invested. Again, they're more invested into the business. So they still so less likely that they're 
default to. Um, with, with condition, condition is meaning uh, what's going on with the business now. Um, what, are, what are the business owners looking to do? Um, and then lenders will look into the conditions of the business by, it's, it's different for separate industry. And also, they're also gonna look at the economy now. What's the demand now for the, for, uh, during this type of economy? So it's, also, so it's really important that you look for a lender that actually understands your, your industry. Some people think that most banks, most lenders would you know, like to lend to all industries, but you know, it's, it's not. You, you want to, when, you, when you go in and inquire about the loan, you want to do your research and see which uh, lenders are, are lending more to the industry that you're in. So the last of the five C's is, is a collateral. A lender will, uh, will also consider you know, the value of the, taking the, the, your business assets or your personal assets as guarantors, right? So let's just say I have, actually let me tell you a quick story. A few years back, we did a operating loan for a farm uh, in partnership with our colleagues in, in Fresno for a farm. Um, the business owner didn't have much of collateral, but guess what? The, guess what the lender took as collateral? They took the donkeys, right? Of all things, they took donkeys as collateral. Um, so you know anything, anything important, anything that's that's you know useful for that type of industry that is asset to that industry that you're in can be used as collateral. So with, with all of these, with, with the five C's that, that I spoke about, all of this can be pictured in our business plans and projections. Um, and here's some information that, that you need. Um, you can always reach out to, to myself, Rocio, and Rocio. And Rocio, now, now that we have you here, I know you've done a lot of work um, with our businesses around business plans and projections. Can you talk a little bit more about that and the impact that, that, that it really have to have an accurate business plan and accurate projections? Yeah, definitely. I think, you know, especially with our startup businesses, it could be really important to be realistic about the numbers and about the different fees that they might have to pay along the way for certification and things like that. Um, I think it really helps inform decisions on how much you want to commit to a particular plan, right? Because you might have like this beautiful vision for your business, but you know, realistically, um, it might take you five years to do it and you'd rather do a different version in two years, or you'd rather do a smaller iteration in one year. And so that's kind of what we can talk about and talk through is like, okay, these numbers look great. Is there anything that we can shift to shift your timeline? Is there anything that we can shift, you know, to fit the market that you're in um, and try to increase that profit margin? So, so just taking a look at those numbers and taking a look at the capital and how it flows through your business can really, I think, empower a business. Because the more you know about your numbers, the more comfortable you are talking about your business, the more comfortable you are networking, um, and even if there is an issue, you know, maybe if there is a loss or there is a glaring problem um, that you need help solving, I think talking about it candidly with lenders and with us um, will, will be the best path forward. Thank you, Rocio. Michaela, I, I know you, you mentioned earlier that you worked a lot with Rocio around, you know, starting your own business and and can you tell tell us a little bit more about what you do and what you're trying to do and how you know how you know Rocio's work have, have helped and impacted what you what you're trying to do yes definitely so I um, uh, mentioned before that I am a preschool director and teacher I've been in the preschool uh, early education field for a little over 11 years now I've worked throughout the Santa Clara County and I have a lot of experience, very knowledgeable of uh, the profit margins that uh, preschool centers have in areas where um, organizations could improve um, in general. So I decided to go on this path of opening a preschool program here in the area. And Rocio has been really helpful with um, helping me look at the business 
aspect of things, right? Um, I'm very knowledgeable about the operation, but in terms of um, the business side, that's something that's very new to me. Um, so she's been really helpful in taking a look at my numbers. Um, I have balance sheets and financial projections uh, for the first uh, year and also incorporating uh, the cost of a potential uh, building sell or, or lease uh, in that regard. So it's been really helpful and I appreciate this organization and Rocio for working with me and making that commitment um, as we have been talking for almost a year now. Thank you, Michaela. And I've, I've, I see that Rocio has been paying you a lot of money to say that. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Not at all. <laughs> Now, 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 when businesses are looking for capital, they always, they, they tend to always jump into, okay, maybe we should talk to a traditional lender. Um, and I, we want to, we want to, we want to tell you there's other ways to, you know, add additional funding um, to your business. Um, a lot of them are not, some of them are non-bank term loans with CDFIs, non you know, non-merchant cash advance, which is advanced on your future sales. Rocio, I know you have a lot of experience working with CDFIs um, and our other, our other, uh, other uh, capital partners. Would you like to talk a little bit more about that? Yes, definitely. I think, you know, um, our traditional banking partners like Comerica are for existing businesses and helping businesses grow and expand. But I think, you know, some businesses that maybe don't have that long history or that two year track record really benefit from smaller community partners, CDFIs, um, and tapping into state programs. So I did want to give one example of a state program that could be really helpful to businesses who might not be thinking about other avenues um, to other avenues to capital. So this, I am gonna share a PDF um, on my screen. And this is a presentation from the North Cal FDC um, that we gave as a webinar a couple of months ago. And what they do is they are part of the California um, structure. So they are, they operate iBank, which is, you know, a non-traditional bank they do a lot of lending for jumpstart loans and things like that. But one thing that I wanted to highlight is that they also have loan guarantee programs. So what this means is that they could also partner with a business that is going out, that is negotiating a loan um, and securing a guarantee for up to, I believe, 250000 so let's say you do have a $200,000 loan with a traditional bank, right? That's a lot, that's a lot of debt. Um, so maybe to alleviate a little bit of that debt burden, you know, you, we would reach out to um, the North Cal FDC and have them um, guarantee part of that loan or that loan entirely. So that if for whatever reason you were to default on some payments, or, you know, you would have to start negotiating. If for whatever reason something happens, you know, God willing it doesn't, um, you would have a second source of support. Um, and the bank would be looking to them to try to fill in whatever is going on versus coming to you and affecting your credit. It, it's a little more complicated than that, but um, it does for, for some businesses, um, especially as they try to grow, bring on more staff, change their models, um, and, and buy equipment or things like that. Um, I think taking out a loan, especially as Tony mentioned, now that the terms have become so much more stringent, um, can be really stressful for small business owners. So the state of California has created this program to support that a little bit. Um, let's see, there is also, so this is a little thing of what they fund um, and they also have smaller loans for jumpstart programs so for example if you you know don't have that two-year history that we were talking about we could connect you with other lenders to try to package that um, so the, there's a lot of non-traditional resources out there and it doesn't always have to be a loan like i said sometimes it's other programs that might just alleviate a little bit of that stress and that burden so we like to get creative. 
but yes, thank that's you. what I wanted to share. Thank you, Rocio. If I could just jump back to my screen. I, I know, I like to jump back to my screen because I, I know um, Christian has some ideas on uh, tapping with uh, ways other, ways, other ways to increase capital. Christian, would you like to go mm -hmm. on? Yes, thank you, Tony. Uh, so uh, thank you, Rocio, for, and Michaela for sharing that information and sharing the different opportunities for beginning businesses. This is definitely a learning moment for everyone. Um, so I'll say that the ways to increase capital, especially for a new business, is, uh, is of course tapping into your personal savings. Now, if there's not a personal savings, you can utilize a network. Um, by networking, whether it's within your family or friends network, whether it's your local chamber of commerce, um, there's different uh, networks that you can try. You can try to ask people for support. It's called bootstrapping, where you're asking your family and friends to support you. And so the other way of uh, building, uh, you're increasing your capital, so to speak, is partnership. So you can partner with other uh, the small business owners who are jump starting and maybe they have someone who is interested in sponsorship or uh, who is willing to sponsor a small business. Uh, so you can do fundraising as well, uh, whether it's coming up with different marketing campaigns, uh, you can look into different grants. Uh, I know that Facebook just launched a small business grant. I think it was specifically for COVID. Um, so grants, especially on the tech side, I know that Instagram also had a grant, I believe, I think Instagram and uh, Vidmo and Facebook. So those are things that uh, businesses can look into. They don't have to go to lending, but there's the option of going to loans. And you can even talk to investors. So get different people who have capital, um, especially if they have a lot of capital, what they'll have is a pretty much a stake in, in your business, but looking for investors is also uh, very smart to building your capital. And you can seek corporate sponsorship. I, I'll say that a couple of resources for um, small businesses, you can use the Department of Treasury, Commerce, um, Minority Business Development, I wrote a few of them here. Of course, there's the Small Business Administration. Um, the Small Business Administration for uh, for lending, so to speak, does require one year of tax returns. Uh, the other thing is city minority business assistance programs. You can check out local uh, chamber of commerces. Uh, there's the Black Business Association. There's the Asian Business Association. You have the United States Hispanic Chamber of Commerce. So there's uh, different resources as far as how to uh, be in the community and network. And then of course there's corporate sponsorship. So corporate sp sponsorship, whether it is seeking like a middle market, like Comerica Bank, or if you're looking to uh, go to different uh, corporations that need businesses to donate to. So a couple of financing options to boost your credit. Uh, so if you do decide to go the lending route, there are business lines of credit which is essentially like a credit card for the business. So if you uh, don't use the funds, there is no fee to pay back. Uh, and these are good for more uh, short-term options. So uh, if you're looking at like a payroll or invoices, uh, business lines of credit are good for that. Term loans are good for more longevity, uh, lo longevity uh, needs for the business. So if you're looking at like purchasing equipment, uh, a, a business term loan is good for that. Small business administration, which is what we're seeing a lot in the market right now as far as PPP, EIDL. Um, so those are, you know, more of like disaster due to, due to COVID, um, but you can go the route of SBA. And then we have commercial real estate loans. So uh, oftentimes business owners own their home and uh, will take a home equity out of their home in order to fund their business. Uh, so that those are a couple of different financing options. 
those are a couple of different financing options when it comes to business lending and boosting your cash flow. Awesome. Thank you, Christian. I, mm -hmm. I heard you, I heard you mention, mention something about Venmo. Um, I, I think one of the, one thing is really important for a business to uh, obtain more capital is open up their payment options. Uh, a lot of businesses still to this day are, is only accepting cash and we need to, we need to get into the mindset of some business owners to stop uh, with that because it is one is hard to report cash businesses. Um, a lot of lenders don't like to accept, uh, a lot of lenders don't like to deal with just cash uh, Business, the business that does only cash transactions. So just open it up um, to open up more payment options for you to do business with like PayPal, Apple Pay, Venmo, Square. Just the more options you give your, your customers to pay you, the more, the more capital you have. So, so now we, we, I like to step into more of the marketing side, um, how to create more traffic for your business um, in terms it would create more capital for your business. Um, I would like to share this video that we have. According to a LinkedIn study, 61% of small businesses find social media useful in gaining new customers. In this video, you'll learn how using social media platforms can drive business. One of the most powerful marketing tools a small business can use is social media. Social media is globally accessible platforms, websites, and mobile applications through which people communicate and share content with one another. Social media uses tools that allows users to share or send the content they see on a site to their friends and family, often by just clicking a button. Sharing makes social media the ultimate many-to-many -many marketing tool with the ability to spread content at warp speed. Let's look at five ways that social media can be used to drive business. First, you can use social media to connect with customers and prospects at a global level with a personal touch. When you connect with customers on social media, you want to create conversations with and between them that make them want to come back. You create fans or followers of your social media site. To create a conversation, for example, a clothing boutique might start by sharing pics of a new fashion trend on Instagram and ask followers to post selfies wearing the trend. Second, you can use social media to build your brand. When you use your social media sites to share content that reflects your business's personality, insights, and passions, you give your business a unique voice, distinguishing yourself and your brand from your competitors. A local gym, for example, might build their brand by posting motivational quotes or pictures daily on their Twitter feed. Third, you can use social media to drive traffic to your website. While not all of the content you share on social media will link back to your site, some will. Sharing an interesting blog post or new product announcement can excite your target audience and send them onto your website for more. For instance, a bath and body shop might announce their new spring scents on their Facebook page and include a promotional code for a discount customers can use to purchase from their website. Fourth, you can use social media to establish your expertise. When you share your knowledge and know-how, you can build a following, an audience that comes to see you as a thought leader. As you build your audience, your influence grows. For example, to establish his expertise as a florist, a floral designer might use YouTube to post a video demonstrating how he makes centerpieces for winter weddings. Fifth, you can use social media to increase sales. Ultimately, all of these activities, connecting, brand building, driving traffic, establishing expertise lead to the same place sales the bottom line is that social media for business has the potential to affect your bottom line ready set get social now Michaela um, at, I, I know you're in the beginning phases of your your business right now have you done any social media marketing Michaela? I'm sorry, the screen froze again. Every now and then it freezes and I have to wait for it to come back. Can you repeat the question? My apologies. I, 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 what I was saying is I know you're in the beginning phases of your business. Um, have you done any of these social media marketing for your business? 
Um, I have not uh, yet because I, as it is a, a preschool program that I'm looking to establish, um, I was more so focusing on allocating a location and then eventually uh, building a website. Once I get everything set to where it needs to be, um, if you have any feedback with um, social media platform um, up until the beginning operations, that would be wonderful. Awesome, awesome. We, we'll definitely do that. Christian, do you have any, any, um, anything to talk about social media for businesses and how it might, how positively impactful it, it could be? Absolutely. So social media, especially due to, you know, our shelter in place, I'll say that, you know, from, from a social media standpoint, it's uh, very key uh, in the success of any business right now. And specifically uh, about, you know, the businesses where we're, we're targeting a certain market. So if you are uh, utilizing social media for your business right now, it's allowing you to then what? Be able to continue to build revenue, stay competitive, and those types of things. I will say that we are now in, a, in more of a generation that is more visual due to, you know, Instagram, which is why Instagram does so well. Um, so we're, we're, we're a more visual generation, and I foresee that we will continue to go that route um, with people wanting more videos, wanting more pictures, and less verbiage, right? They want to read less, and they want to see more. Um, so definitely think that uh, social media marketing uh, is important. Of course, you can do, you know, mass marketing when it comes to like emailing and mailing and those types of things are good. A word of mouth is good, but being very strategic when it comes to utilizing your social media platforms. And then of course, being strategic about your market. So say for example, she has the preschool. So if, if we're marketing for a preschool, we definitely want to market to maybe parents who have younger children, right? And so uh, we want to be more attractive with, you know, our, how we're marketing. Maybe it could be a picture of, of a child with a mask on. Um, very strategic when it comes to how we're utilizing uh, social media. Absolutely. Something. I'd um, really like to add that this is an area where a lot of businesses are nervous about building, right? You know, everyone is nervous about putting out content and saying the right thing um, and reaching out and, you know, you don't get sales that day that you send out a post and things like that. Um, but it's definitely something that we work to encourage because it can build dialogue with communities that about when you were thinking about your potential client market right um, it's easy for people to, to share referrals if there is content out there that they can share um, it's easier for networking right somebody might, you might meet someone in person and they say oh you know what I saw something that you wrote like oh you're the lady who wrote this or or something like that so even if you don't have an immediate result from social media engagement, um, I think having content that speaks to your mission, your vision, um, can really help you connect with a wider audience, for sure. Absolutely. Thank you, Rosier, for that. Now, so, I'm sorry, now my turn, my, my, my computer is frozen, so I apologize. So the bottom line, um, I think positioning your business for growth doesn't really take a lot of money, but it does take a lot of time and effort. Um, uh, just with you know, building your business plans, projections, effort, time on that, or with your social media advertisement, it takes a lot of time and effort. Um, it, but then as a business owner, especially during the times now, the present times now, you want to make it a habit of, you know, trying to develop new ways to, to, to expand your products, your service, you know, even marketing, just to reach your customer base and reach more, extend, extend your customer base. You know, again, especially during now with, with the whole global pandemic, um, we're, business owners really require a little bit more creativity and innovation to drive more um, to, to, you know, drive, drive more traffic, 
to the business and drive more traffic to themselves. Uh, Rosie, I, I know you're you're really good with being creative and being innovative. Um, just for since Michaela is here, you know, just just for her her basis, you know, for preschool. What else? What What do you think you can do um, around you know, preschool? I think one thing that Michaela and I are working on right now is that she has a pitch opportunity, just like a networking event coming up soon. And so we're talking about talking points. I think some social media advice to move forward with that might be, you know, to reach out on LinkedIn or on Facebook to anybody that you meet. I think as you kind of network more and more, I would say couple that with some internet presence. Um, and that will help you stay present in people's mind, especially when you can't have a lot of in-person meetings right now. Awesome. And Michaela, how do you feel about that? How do you, how do you feel about all, uh, what Rocio just said? Okay. I think we can hear you. <laughs> okay, I can hear you now. I'm sorry that it keeps going in and out. Would you please repeat uh, the last thing that you said? Uh, no, I, just... I was just saying, you know, following your pitch event, you know, to social media network with whoever you meet there, right? If you have a genuine connection with someone or a good conversation, couple that with like a, a push on Facebook or on LinkedIn. And that way you can kind of build the conversations and stay fresh in their mind. Definitely. Thank you. Well, I mean, Christian, you have any closing, closing remarks, I mean, closing ideas that we could share with our attendees? Yeah, so uh, thanks, Tony, for giving me, um, a, you know, this opportunity to talk about um, Comerica Bank, but more importantly, making sure, you know, the businesses are positioning themselves for growth. And going back to the social media and LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Um, I will say that, you know, we're, our, our younger generation um, is, we have to meet them at their level. And so um, one of the ways to get the attention of generations uh, or that generation is by social media. And I'll say that across the board, we now have like five different generations. So we have to learn uh, the, the uh, how to attract each, if, if our target market is all generations, then we have to learn what's specific or what's valuable to that specific generation. So for example, a baby boomer might not like Facebook and Instagram, but would prefer more face-to-face. Um, and then a millennial would prefer, uh, like, you, like you have here, would prefer more of a, a social media. And then Generation Z would even be more of like a TikTok or maybe, uh, maybe like a, a Twitter. So we, we want to make sure that um, you are utilizing all your, your, your social media presence. And I'll also say that uh, we are definitely in a customer management error meaning that customer service is key. Uh, a lot of people value uh, being treated nicely, fairly, um, with respect and, you know, and kind service. So customer service is key. Oftentimes people, I've, you know, I've had people work with me, even though, you know, the, the rates may be a little higher, they prefer to work with with me because of customer service, right? So people, people bank with people, people work with people. Um, so when, when you're marketing your business, yes, you're marketing your business, but essentially you're marketing yourself. And so um, people are doing business with you. And uh, I just want to encourage everyone to make sure that, you know, you're meeting each customer at their need because customers have all sorts of needs and you want to make sure you're diversified and you're able to um, serve everyone on on a different platter but still be able to market your business so yeah thanks tony awesome christian thank you for all that um we're we're, we're going to end this a little bit early today i won't get in at anybody's lunch time but i do want to take this chance again to thank uh comerica i want to thank sonia and david um from Comerica's external affairs marketing manager, marketing managers. Um, without them, again, well, we won't be able to make this happen. 
David, I know I have you on. Would you like to say a few words? Uh, yeah, thank you, Tony. And um, thank you to all of our speakers today. I think this is really valuable information and um, especially the, you know, the, the diverse group of speakers we have, I think is really important. You know, we have the industry experts, but now we also have a small business owner um, hearing her firsthand experience. So, um, you know, I think this is crucial right now what we're talking about. And, um, you know, when it comes to lending, I think this is, you know, a very uh, interesting time for us because there's a lot of different options out there that were not, you know, once out there. I know a lot of these corporations are stepping up and they're creating these emergency funds. Um, same thing with a lot of the counties and cities they're creating emergency funds for their businesses. Um, and then again, I know we talked a little bit about social media, but that's really a way to, you know, stay connected with your customers and keep them updated on what's happening. So um, great information. And again, we thank um, you, Tony, um, and uh, my partner with Agent Inc. for putting this together. Thank you, David. Um, and again, uh, for those who input questions into our chat area, we will get back to you individually um, and we will definitely work with you. So our next session is next Tuesday, the 21st, and we'll be going over the small business credit. So, so please you know, register for, for that session. That would be a great session that we'll be going over. Uh, as, again, especially now um, with the whole, the whole COVID situation, it's, it's, it's really important to be aligned with it with everything in our lenders. So thank you all. Um, thank you for joining us today. I'll see you next week.